in your calculator, make sure that you go hit mode. That mode needs to be in degrees, not radians. So everyone's in degrees, love it. Okay, let's go look at these cute little triangles, you guys. <clears throat> um, <coughs> if we've got this cute little triangle, did I put this information on the calendar, on the triangle for you? That angle P is 35 degrees. And side R, side R is always going to be across from angle R. So if that's angle R, psh, little side R is going to be 14. They want us to find Q. Do you think that they want angle Q or side Q? Side. They want side Q. You guys, whenever we've got a right triangle, we can use Sokotoa. We can use the Sokotoa. So, Katoa. If they want side Q, we cannot use this angle, this 90 degree angle, but I could use this 35 degree angle. And what do we know? What's the opposite and the adjacent, the hypotenuse here? Wouldn't P be the opposite? Yeah. If my angle was uh, 35 degrees, what would R be? Love the hypotenuse, good. And what about Q? Side Q would be the adjacent, good. So what would we want to use, so ka or toa, in order to find side Q? We have a hypotenuse and we need the adjacent. Hypotenuse and we need the adjacent. <clears throat> cool cosine? I cosine of the angle. Where's the angle, what is it? 35 equals so ka adjacent over hypotenuse. Q over 14. Beautiful, Mateo. What do we do to solve for Q? Beautiful. Sorry I gave you a Q. We love, we hate that. Let's go into our calculators, you guys. We're going to go type in 14, cosine a 35. We should all get 11.5? 11. I'd say 11. I like 11.47. 11. Perfect. That sounds good, too. Then I was sassy, and I said, not using the Pythagorean theorem, since I know Q is now 11.5, I could do this squared plus P squared gets me 14 squared, but I asked you not to just because I want to practice Sokoto a little bit more. If I want to find side P, how would I do that? Sine. sine. Very good. Sine, because we need the opposite, and we have the hypotenuse. I dig it. So we got the sine of 35 equals the opposite, which was P, over the hypotenuse, which was 14. What are y'all getting when you type that sucker in? 8.03. 8.03. So we're good with 8.0 or 8. Okay, let's try this guy. Round to the nearest tenth. Does anyone remember how many decimals that is? Just one decimal. You guys, I didn't put the info on the picture this time. Side B is 13. Side B, so little b. I'm going to put this guy's 13. Angle A is 76. They want side A. If they gave us this angle, what would side A be considered? Opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse? Opposite, love it. What's 13 going to be? Adjacent. Yeah. I dig it. So, ka, or toa? Toa. Toa. The tangent of my angle is what over what? A over 13. We're going to multiply by that 13. You're going to tell me what we get because I don't have an answer key in front of me. Uh, apparently, it's 52. 0.1? Because they asked for the nearest tenth. That's like not far enough. How about on this guy? I'm giving you angle B, giving you side B, and I want side C. So, ka, or toa? So, sine of 26 is what over what? You guys, this time we've got a variable in the denominator, do we not? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Do we do the same thing to start? We sure do. What do we multiply by still? C. We still multiply that by that denominator. And that gets me C times the sine of 26 is what? It equals 18. Then how would I get C by itself? Inverse. Yeah, we got to do the divide by the sine of 26. So we've got 18 divided by the sine of 26. Would have done the inverse sign. No, we only do that when we're looking for an angle, which we'll get to that, Koopy. Okay. 41.1. One. One. 
Okay, we've got, first of all, a pentagon. How many sides in a pentagon? Five. Five, one is regular. What do we know about those sides? They're all, equal. They're all the same. That's huge. That's good to know. All these sides are the same. Inscribed means that that pentagon sits right inside that circle. Um, the diameter of the whole circle is 8.34 centimeters. So this diameter would have been 8.34 so how did we get this unit right here? Two. Yeah, that's the radius, and they just divided that by two. Okay. Then it says the apothem is a segment from the center to the midpoint of a side. So you guys, maybe if I were you, I'd be like this. Boom, this guy. It, and they labeled it with A. They labeled it with A. Maybe you want to label it with apothem. It says find the apothem. What? Okay, people, do you agree? I do have a right triangle here. Yes. So we are, we can do a little Sokotoa, but correct me if I'm wrong. I don't have much info about this right triangle. Yeah. I don't have this leg. I don't have this leg. I do have my hypotenuse. Are you right? Yeah. Could I find this cute little alpha angle? Yes. I can, and here's why. Because they said this shape has five equal sides. That means that these angles will all be equal as well. Yeah. Whew. Okay, so let's visualize this. I love it, you guys. Let's visualize this. Could I say that in a pentagon, we would have five triangles? Yes. Equal triangles. Could I figure out what this angle would be? Yeah. And that one, how would I get that? It'd be exactly twice the value of 360. 360 divided by five is gonna get me this big angle, right? So what is, I would write that down of our 360 over 5 is 72. is 72. But as Coop just said, Cooper, that's going to get me this angle. And you said that's twice as big as alpha. Yeah. So what would I do to get my cute little alpha angle so that I've got a right triangle? Divide that by 2 again. What's that going to get? Beautiful. My alpha is 36 degrees, you guys. Was there a way that we could have done that in one step instead of two? You're like, if there are five triangles, there are 10 half triangles, if you will, right? So 30, 360 divided by 10, we could have gotten that in one step. I Now, if I focus on this triangle, I'm even going to get rid of this highlighted spot here. If I focus on this triangle, and maybe off to the side, I'm going to draw another triangle. Because I want us to think, here's what we're dealing with. So maybe off to the side, I think what it helps my kids see is what does that right triangle look like? Isn't it more like, boom, 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 right triangle. This is 4.17, and this we just found out to be 36, and that's my apothem. Agreed. Well done. He's saying, okay, so or Toa, do we know what the opposite is? Nope. But the apothem happens to be the adjacent as well. And 4.17 is the hypotenuse. Well said, Mr. Risman. He said, okay, then we got to go cosine. The cosine of my angle. And again, that angle came from doing 360 divided by 10. Cosine of my angle would be what over what? Apothem over 4.17. Very good, you guys. Go get that A. 3.37. 3 so I'd say 3.8. Yeah. Oopsies, 3.37 would get me 3.4. Cooper, thank you. 3.37 is going to get me 3.4. Beautiful. Good job, you guys. What did I not give you on 20? I didn't give you the shape. I want us to draw. Okay, people, to draw a hexagon. Let's see how our art goes. Oh, we want to go big. I gave us a big spot. Meaning, if I were you, I would draw a big circle. Oh, look at that circle. That's a good circle. I am proud of myself. If I were you, then I would go top, bottom. And then I'd cut it in third and third. And third and third. And then I would just connect. And boom, chicka pop, chicka pow. Chicka oops, chicka oop, and boop. 
Okay, peeps, we just drew a regular hexagon. Ooh, let's go show that our diameter is 3.4. Uh, oops. My diameter is 6.4. Yes. What would that make a radius? Our radius would be 3.2. Good. So what I would do actually is throw the center of your circle in there. My radius would be 3.2. Mateo, a radius is always going to go right to the end of the circle, right? We could draw all of them. We don't have to, but we could. The question is, where would the apothem go? The apothem would be down the middle. It's going to go boop. It's got to be a perfect right angle, and it would divide that side in half. Also, I've noticed... Sokotoa only works on right triangles, so we need a right triangle. Sorry, Coop. Okay, you guys, you agree we're looking for this opossum. <clears throat> Cooper was like, dude, I know I need this angle here. I know I need that. You guys, we could have six big triangles in a hexagon. Or how many little half triangles? Twelve. Twelve. So I'm just going to take that 360. I'm going to divide by 12. And Cooper said, that's going to be 30 degrees. Boom. That's, that's going to get me 30 degrees going there. Going to be 60, yes, but, sir. Because each triangle is 180. That's right. I'm going to erase these just so that they don't throw us off. Boop. Right. Boop. Okay. Love it. We could totally go our 30, 60, 90 route. If you're like, oh, I'd rather just do Sokotoa. Great. Let's do Sokotoa. It doesn't matter, but it says, what's the apothem? You guys, if we've got this angle here, the apothem would be the adjacent hypotenuse or opposite. It is the adjacent. What would our 3.2 get me? I'm sorry, our 3.2 is the hypotenuse. My bad. Yes. So, ka or toa. We need cosine of 30 or sine of 60. Perfect. Well done. Let's go cosine of 30, adjacent over hypotenuse. That's going to get me in my apothem over my hypotenuse, right? Let's go calculate that. What is 3.2 times cosine of 30? 2.771. 2 According to my calculator. Okay. 2.7 foot. Does anyone else agree or disagree? No. You got that back? Cool. So that's where we ended on the last one. This one I'm asking more questions. I said, okay, then what's the length of the side of a hexagon? Double the sine of 30. Nice. He's saying, okay, I got to go find this first. This is... This is a half of a side, and then we need to double it to get that whole side. Well said, sir. So, you guys, in order to find this guy, I'm going to label this guy. I'm going to find this one as X. In order to find X, what do we think? X is the opposite. It's 1.6. Oh. How'd yeah. you get that? Because this is 30, 60, 90. And across, it's going to be half of the hypotenuse. Well said. Let's go prove that with some Sokotoa. Yes. Well done. So, Katoa, if we ha need the opposite and we have the hypotenuse, do you down with a little S-O-H, S-O-H, sign? Sure. Sign of 30 is my opposite, which is X, over my hypotenuse. Cooper has predicted it's going to be 1.6. 3.2 times the sine of 30 is going to be, look at that, Coop. Beautiful. Now, Ritzy, that just gets us this part, right? They said find the length of the side of a whole hexagon. What do we want to do to that, buddy? We just double it. He's saying we got to double that. That's going to get us 3.2. So it most likely means in any regular polygon, on the hypotenuse is usually... Only the in a hexagon. The hypotenuse and the side will always be yeah. the same. It's the only one. Hexagon yeah. always. Yep. Um, you guys... Question, how would I get perimeter if this little leggy here, if this little leggy is 3.2 and this little leggy is 3.2, what do we do? Uh, just yeah, 3.2 times 6. 19.2. Thanks, buddy. Then, this last part says, what's the area? You guys, how would I find the area of this hexagon? There is no formula that you grew up with, like in geometry, for the area of a hexagon. But... Do you know what the area of one triangle is? Base times one, half base times. one half base times height. You guys, how many of these green triangles do I have in a hexagon? Six of them. 
So we're gonna do one half. What's the base that we just found out? 3.2. What was the height? That's the apothem. What was the apothem? 2.771. That's the area of one triangle. What do we have to do to get the area of the whole hexagon? Perimeter. Times six. I'm going to show you what these words meant in just a second. Could you guys go type that in? Let me know what you get for that. Well, you're not following. I know. I'll, I'll do it that way. I'll show you. I'm doing it different. Did you all get 26.6? Okay. To me... This is a very intuitive way. Find the area of one triangle and multiply it by however many triangles there are. Is there a fancy formula that we could memorize? Sure. It says the area of a polygon, look at this. Here's one half, we have a one half. The perimeter, how did we get perimeter? Perimeter, we did 3.2 times six. And then times the apothem. It wasn't our apothem 2.771. Didn't we just do that exact same thing? Sure. Could we remember that area of a polygon is always one half the perimeter, uh, regular poly, one half the perimeter times the apothem? Yeah. But if you don't want to have to memorize that, you can say I'm going to find one triangle and multiply by how many triangles? Up to you. So homework will be 21, page 21, and then page 22 up to problem 26.